These days, there are a lot of options when it comes to good mid-range chips. We have the MediaTek Helio P60, we have the Snapdragon 636, we have the Snapdragon 710, the 660, and Huawei also has its own 710, the High Silicon Kirin 710. Recently, in the Nova 3i unboxing video, you know, which happens to be the first phone to sport this Kirin 710, I talked about what this chip is and how it compares to the competition. But it was an un unboxing video, right? And I just couldn't talk about it in as much detail as I wanted to. So here we are. Hey guys, Ash here from c 4 e Tech. Car to give away a link in the description below. And while you're down there, hit the bell icon to make sure you don't miss out on any of our latest content. So Huawei has been releasing a lot of phones with the Kirin 659, just like Samsung has been with the Exynos 7870 or Xiaomi with the Snapdragon 625. This Kirin 710 is what's caused Huawei an honor to break that monotony. So what is the Kirin 710? Now it's the latest mid-range mid chip from Huawei. It's a combination of four power efficient uh, A53 cores and four power intensive A73 cores. So usually, a few years back, this combination used to be found only on flagship chips. But for the last couple of years, starting with the Snapdragon 652, we've been seeing this on mid-rangers too. So this has kind of caused a split in the mid-range segment. Uh, we have the lower mid-range chips like the Snapdragon 625 or the Kirin 659, which have just two sets of A53 cores. So A53s are the power efficient cores, right? So these chips come with two sets of the power efficient A53s. One of, the, one of that cluster is clocked lower, one is clocked higher. Then there's the more premium mid-range chip. Now they come with a set of powerful cores, like one set of A73s paired with one, one set of A53s. And that's what the Kirin 710 has. Now the cores in the Snapdragon chips, the 636 and the 660, they are called Cryo 260 cores. Now the Cryo 260 is basically Qualcomm's terminology. It's like Samsung calling long displays, infinity displays, right? Uh, but with infinity displays, we have what we see on the Galaxy S9 Note 8 and all that. And then we have what we see on the Galaxy J6. Now Samsung calls both as infinity display, but they aren't really the same, right? The same way, there are different kinds of Cryo 260s. There are some Cryo 260 cores that are based on the A53. And then we have Cryo 260 cores based on A73. Now, if you find all this confusing for all intents and purposes, the Kirin 710, Snapdragon 636, Snapdragon 660, and even the MediaTek Helio P60 have the same kind of core split up, A73s and A53s. Okay, so now that we've confirmed that all three have similar cores, what sets them apart? What are the differences? Well, clock speeds for one. Well, the 636 has a maximum clock speed of 1.8 gigahertz, the MediaTek Helio P60, 2 GHz, the 660 and the Kirin 710 can do 2.2 GHz. Now these are for the more powerful A73 cores, the clock speeds of the power efficient A53s. Uh, and there are some differences there, but they don't make a huge difference, a uh, huge change to the overall picture. Now what makes a huge difference though, is the manufacturing process these chips are built on. The Snapdragon chips are built on the 14 nanometer FinFET, while the MediaTek and Kirin chips are built on the 12 nanometer process. So what does this mean? To simplify it, lower the number, lesser the power consumption, also lower the heat generation. So for example, if both the Snapdragon 660 and the Kirin 710 run at the same clock speeds of 2.2 gigahertz, the Kirin 710 being built on the 12 nanometer process should in theory consume lesser power and also run cooler. It's not that simple in real life scenarios, but this is the theory, this is the basic idea. So where does this leave the Snapdragon 710? Well, the Snapdragon 710 is far ahead. It's built on the 10 nanometer process, something that was reserved for flagship chips like the Snapdragon 835 and 845 till the Snapdragon 710. It also uses the more advanced Cryo 360. And here's a fun fact, with the Cryo 360, Qualcomm's making it easier to identify the cores. So Cryo 360 Gold and Silver. Gold's built based on the Cortex-A75 and Silver A55. And the A75 and A55 are already advancements over the A73 and A53 that we find on the other chips we were talking about. So this means from a CPU perspective, the Snapdragon 710 is your top chip for mid-range. That's followed by the Kirin 710, 
then the Snapdragon 660, Helio P60, and the 636. That said, the SOCs today aren't just about the CPU. There's a GPU part too. And here's where Qualcomm with their Adreno solutions are far ahead. So this list goes Snapdragon 710 followed by 660 followed by 636, which is almost equal to the Helio P60 with its Mali G71 MP3 tri-core GPU. And finally, we've got the Kirin 710's Mali G51 MP4. It's a quad-core GPU, but the 710, you know, it's just the Kirin 710, it's not up there with the rest. But do not worry just yet, because most games played just fine on the Kirin 659 and the 710 is an improvement on that. So as far as your day-to-day -day gaming goes, it shouldn't be a big issue. It should still run everything smoothly. It just goes to show how in today's premium gaming market, the bar isn't all that high on almost any phone bought in the last two years should run most games smoothly, unless you're one of the 10 million or so people who bought a phone for the smart glow ring. I'm just saying. Now the Kirin 710 has yet another nifty trick up its sleeve. It has a dedicated NPU to handle those AI processes. The Helio P60 does that too, but the Qualcomm mid-rangers don't. So where the Qualcomm chips need to utilize the GPU to get these processes done, the Kirin 710 and P60 consume less battery and don't need to push the GPU as hard as they have a dedicated neural processing unit for AI. Now, barring these, the Kirin 710 does have one flaw. It can't do 4K video, at least it doesn't do that on the Nova 3i. As of now, I don't know if it's a hardware limitation because Huawei doesn't have any info on the Kirin 710. So we don't know if it is a hardware limitation, it would be a bad limitation because even something like the Snapdragon 625, which is part of the lower mid-range tier, even that can do 4K. But the Kirin uh, 710 can do 1080 60 FPS, which is, you know, it is worth something. So coming back, on paper, this chip seems to be solid, a little above the 660, Snapdragon 660 on CPU, but lower on GPU. And the added uh, dedicated NPU and frills like Dual Bolt T are great. Uh, Huawei's high silicon chips over the past two generations have been breathing down Qualcomm's neck, and the Kirin 710 narrows the gap even more. Now remember, all these are theory and based on synthetic benchmarks and so on. With practical usage, I'm in the process of testing the 710 out on the Nova 3i, and it's been delivering so far. I'll have more to say in my full review of the phone. So if you don't want to miss that, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications by clicking the bell icon. If you like deep dives into technology like this one, Give this video a thumbs up, vote it down if you hated it, and I guess that's it, it's time I bid you adieu. Thanks a lot for watching, until, oh yeah, and before we close, every time where I wear this t-shirt, somebody or the other ends up saying, hey, stop making political statements, guns do kill people and all that. This is just a fun t-shirt, it's, it's a Game of Thrones t-shirt, so if you see that in the comment, let whoever it is know. All right, so. Any which ways. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, my name's Ash. You've been watching C4E Tech. And I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye bye.